What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be doing kind of like a science experiment. I had picked up this Wicked Colors. It is called Flare Silver Spectrum. And what we're going to be doing today is pretty simple. We're going to be taking two blanks, painting them both the exact same pattern, one with a base coat of white and one without, so we can see how it turns out when it's been applied with both methods. The blank that we are going to be using today is a three inch tiny tail splasher from Barlow's Tackle. Of course, I will have it linked down in the description below if you guys want to pick some up for yourself. I will also have in the description the other paint colors I use, so if you guys are trying to replicate this pattern exactly, you'll know exactly which paints I was using today. So enough talking, let's get to painting. I've got two baits ready to go because one of them we're going to be doing a base coat of white and the other one we're going to keep it transparent. That way we can see what this color looks like when both methods are applied. I'll just be showing the process on one of them. That way you guys don't have to watch me do the pattern twice. The flare silver spectrum is going to be the main color. and We're just gonna add a couple others to make it a pretty pattern, but again, keeping it really simple. First thing I'm going to be doing is giving this bait a base coat of opaque white. Base coat of white is on this one and that one is still transparent. Next thing we're going to be doing is adding our flare silver spectrum to both baits. I'm probably going to do two to three thin layers. I want it to build up nice, that way all those colors will show through, but I don't wanna to spray too thick and too heavy, or you'll end up with a messy bait. So it wasn't until about the third layer that I really started to notice the color shift going on. I'm hoping the camera's picking it up good. If not, we should be able to see it later once the clear coat goes on. But that is what the transparent one looks like so far. You can see all those different colors reflecting off of it. Then the one with the white base coat, I'm blown away by all the different colors that are on there. Probably as soon as this video's done, I'm going to go paint some sort of shad pattern, like on a glide bait or something using this color. It really has that nice shimmer to it. Next step, we're going to be taking this iridescent turquoise, and then we're going to be spraying the back of the bait and then up on the gill plate. So I'm again, trying to keep this pattern super simple. I don't want to take away from this color at all. So I'm going to load up the iridescent turquoise and the airbrush and sling some paint. These baits have a really cool little divot right there, just below the mouth. So I'm just going to take some transparent bright red. We're going to hit the divot on the bottom of the bait along with the open mouth up there right by the first eyelet. Now that the red is all done, we're going to be moving on to our last step, which is using some transparent black. We're going to be adding two dots to each bait. I'm going to do a slightly larger dot up here just behind the gill plate, and then a smaller one about splitting the difference right in the middle on the bottom of the bait back there. In one of my previous videos, I had just hand sprayed the shad dot on there. Somebody commented saying that they prefer the ones that are used they prefer the dots that are sprayed with a stencil for the nice clean edges. I'm indifferent about it. I think both look good. So you guys let me know in the comments which way you spray your baits. Either you do it both ways or if you just freehand the dots where it's fuzzy or if you use a stencil similar to this one. And if you are new to lure painting or using stencils, one thing that I always like to do in a situation like this is I never start spraying directly where I actually want the paint to go. I always kind of start spraying off to the side here till I get the paint flowing how I want it and then move on to the dot. That'll kind of keep it, especially if you don't have good trigger control on the airbrush, it'll keep it from spraying way too much or splattering. So I always start off to the side. So I get the paint flowing like that. And then move up on to where I actually want the paint to go. And that helps keep it nice, even, and controlled. 
Okay, last thing I'm going to do with this pattern is I'm going to take that black and I'm going to very, very, very carefully darken up the back just a little bit right down the center. And then I'm gonna do it just up here on the nose and the eyes, just a little bit. I don't want it to be solid black like the shad dots are, but I want it enough that it'll make the back of the bait uh, the darkest point and it'll fade into that blue and then to our silver spectrum on the sides. Now I just gotta repeat it on the other bait. Both baits are painted and ready for some eyes. Decided to go with some red and black ones. I think it goes good with the paint scheme. So we're going to get those glued in. Make sure to do a little dab of glue to help adhere the eye to the bait. Okay, both baits are ready for clear coat. I think at the moment, the transparent one is my favorite. We will see what happens when the clear coat goes on. You guys let me know in the comments which one you think looks better. And also if there's any other paint colors that you'd like me to do a video like this with. I do also have this color, which is like a blue and gold. So whenever it's sprayed, it'll kind of color shift from blue to gold. So I might do a similar video like that with the other color if you guys are interested. And if you have any other colors, make sure to let me know. I can get them and do similar videos. I'm gonna get the clear coat put on these so we can see what they look like all finished up. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next video.